Welcome to Alchemical Science. I'm Jordan, a self-taught farmer, electrical engineer, and physicist who conducts open source research in the areas of unified field theory, soil science, plant biology, radiant energy, neuroscience, and the energy systems of the human body. I'm also a practicing alchemist, and so I try to employ a research methodology that's informed and directed by the hypothesis that there is a universal pattern that can be observed in all aspects of the natural world. We just need to look for it. My research is fully open source and no new ideas expressed in my videos can be patented. So in this video we're going to discuss how to record and analyze the extremely low frequency signals emitted by plants, much in the same way that we record human brain waves with an EEG machine. I believe this idea is original, but it was inspired by similar experiments outlined in the books Paramagnetism, Rediscovering Nature's Secret Force of Growth by Philip Callahan, and How Your Brain Works by Greg Cage and Tim Marzullo, the team from Backyard Brains. Um, and I also read a few papers on the subject, so I'll provide links to all of the above in the description. Uh, so first we've got to build a plant EEG tool, so we'll go and do that now. All right, so to be able to measure EEG signals from a plant, I'm just calling them EEG signals, but they certainly act similarly. Um, we just need to build a tool to be able to do it. So I've used this here, um, which it's actually this little chip here. It's a biosignal amplifier made by uh, an Indian research team called Upside Down Labs. Um, and this is an open source de design, so you can either purchase the, the uh, chip from them, which it's only about, I, I think, like maybe $40 or something like that. Or you can actually go and print the circuit board yourself and make it up if you know how to do that. So um, that's a really good one to use, but you can use any uh, like uh, EEG amplification device. And there's quite a few on the market now that are marketed as like meditation tools and all sorts of things. And that's just connected into an Arduino Mega here, um, which I think you can use an Arduino Nano as well. Uh, and that's going into my laptop. Um, and I'm, then I'm using another piece of software, which I'll tell you about in a minute, called Brain Bay, uh, to analyze and be able to view the signals. But first of all, um, our biosignal amplifier here, the EXG pill, it has three output leads here. Um, so you can see I've just stuck them into a plant um, here, but there are three electrodes. So this is our reference electrode uh, with the black here. This is our negative electrode with the yellow, and that one is our positive electrode with the red. So the two here, the reference and the negative, are just plain sterling silver. So I think ideally you can buy a pin that's called, uh, I think it's like a nine, two five pin that they use for jewelry you can find them on ebay and amazon um i think that'd be perfect for this but i just had an, an old electrode so it's sterling silver laying around so i've cut it up to use for this but then the positive electrode um i've uh made this into a silver chloride electrode um which it, it just seems like for these types of measuring activities uh, where you want to get a really low noise uh, low voltage, low frequency signal, um, then you use silver, silver chloride electrodes. So I just copied what other people are doing there for similar tasks. Um, so this one though, yeah, it's just the same thing, sterling silver, but I just soaked it in this little jar of household bleach. So just regular household bleach um, for a half hour, and that gives it this silver chloride coating and you know if you were doing a totally controlled experiment this wouldn't be sufficient but for our uses it's totally fine um you, you'll be able to see that it, it works for what we're trying to use it for so then i've just stuck the reference in at the root base of the plant it's kind of going into the root base of the plant i've stuck the positive in a little bit higher and the negative just at that kind of uh base between where the roots and the growing tip are and I'd say that we can use a number of configurations here but this has worked fine for me for receiving the signals and I've tried it on a number of plants so I think that that's good enough for now um, and so what's happening here when we're recording the signals is essentially we've got 
the reference electrode um, and then mathematically it will minus off the voltage signal from the negative electrode to get a kind of reference point of the noise that's happening uh, and then it will uh, minus off the this rectified uh, reference voltage potential from the positive electrode to give our result that's then converted into frequency or an oscilloscope reading or any of those things. Um, and just as a side note from an alchemical perspective, um, it's really interesting how silver works. Um, you know, we're using it for these really low noise electrodes, but then also we use it for mirrors. Um, you know, they've got a very fine silver nanoparticle um, coating on them and they just give this kind of mirror finish, right? This really reflective surface. Uh, and then also I'm a flute player and all flute players know that the best flutes are made from sterling silver and they give a very pure, clear tone. So it's kind of interesting that, you know, both in terms of light and sound, um, we find that silver kind of provides this low distortion, high purity kind of um, tone or wave for us to analyze. So um, that's about all there is to that. Then we're, we're putting it into this software here, uh, which is called Brain Bay. Um, even though this looks like I'm using a Mac, it's got Windows installed on it, and Brain Bay is only available for Windows, unfortunately. So if you have a Mac, you'll have to install Boot Camp, or if you've got a Windows computer, you're good to go. You can just search Brain Bay. Um, I'll provide the links in the description to this and also to uh, Upside Down Labs and, um, yeah, all the parts for this. So... Um, yeah, you can download the software and install it, and it allows you to create these algorithms to analyze the data you're getting from these biosignal, biofeedback devices. So uh, the, I'll just quickly run through how I've set this up here to make this design, but I'll provide this design for you so you don't have to do this yourself, obviously. Um, but it's a lot of fun, actually. You'll find a lot of applications for this, probably. So we've got our input here, which is just our EXG pill uh, wired up to our Arduino coming in via the USB port. Um, I've got a 50 hertz filter here, which is just to filter out any kind of uh, power grid noise or anything else that might be around, even though we're pretty far from everything here. And then I've just got it going into these different oscilloscope channels here. So that's these filters uh, going into the oscilloscope here. And you can see we've got the raw data here, uh, zero to four, Hertz range, which is, you know, in human neuroscience, uh, that's considered the delta range, like deep sleep. Uh, four to eight hertz here, which is the theta range in human neuroscience. Uh, eight to 12 hertz, which is alpha. Uh, 12 to 30 hertz, which is beta and high beta range. And then 30 to 100 hertz, which just 100 hertz is the maximum frequency that Brain Bay deals with because human brain signals are in a very low frequency range so it really doesn't need to do a lot higher than that. The only times we see higher signals than that in the human brain are when people are in kind of advanced states of meditation. Um, so generally it's just these low frequencies from the four to, th uh, sorry, the zero to 30 hertz range that are analyzed. So I've got all of that set up and then also just a um, an FFT, a frequency, a frequency spectrum graph here as well, which it'll um, kind of just give us another view of what's happening with the signals in the plants. So I'll hide this design and um, yeah, we've got our electrodes set up with our plant. We've got our EXG little set up. I'll cover that up again now and we'll actually jump in and measure some biofeedback signals now from the plants. So all I've got to do now that this is set up um, and connected is hit play. I'll actually just start a, oops, sorry, screen recording here. All right. So we can see what's happening here. Um, our FFT graph, we've got our one hertz here um, and our low bands and then going up to 40 hertz at the top here. And then over on our oscilloscope, this is our raw data here. So just the amplitude of the entire signal. This is our zero to four hertz band. So that is, you know, traditionally our delta wave in 
the human brain. Uh, this is our 4 to 8 hertz band, so the theta. Uh, this is our 8 to 12 hertz band, so alpha and 12 to 30, so beta. So we can see there's pretty much nothing happening in the beta band. Um, there's a little bit happening in the alpha band, and I find that, uh, look, I, I'm not entirely sure what the correlations are yet, but this does, sometimes they have a little bit more alpha, but it is gen generally a low signal, and also same with this theta band, where there's always some activity here, um, but sometimes a little more than this, and then, yeah, the delta band, always high activity here with every plant I've tested, um, which you know, this is quite interesting because if we consider the human brain when we're, you know, uh, measuring EEG signals and analyzing them, this delta here is generally associated with deep sleep. And then, of course, the theta, which is the other one that sometimes shows a little bit higher amplitude than this, is uh, kind of, you know, that half state of sleep or a very relaxed state. It's somewhere you can um, a state of mind that you can get through meditation, you know, it's a very relaxed state of mind, very dreamlike. Um, so it's very interesting that plants are emitting signals like that, because they are indeed in some kind of state of meditation, if we um, have any conception that they are alive. Obviously, they don't have the consciousness of a human being, but or the nervous system. However, they are indeed emitting signals seemingly in the same wave bands as a human mind in sleep or deep meditation. So one other thing we can do here is, um, and this is an experiment done by Backyard Brains. I'll link to that video in the description as well. Um, but you can measure the biopotential signals of like, you know, for example, tapping a plant or doing other things. So if I tap the leaf here, we can see that signal is uh, received on the thing. So I can very gently tap the plant at the top and you'll see that in, interestingly enough, still not very high in this uh, 30 to 100 Hertz band, but quite high signals in the 12 to 30 and four to 12 and the uh, four to eight. And then still similar signals in the uh, zero to four band, but still it's got that influencing variable waveform going on there. Uh, so yeah, that's an action potential signal. And uh, in that Backyard Brains video, you'll be able to see he even uses another plant to, uh, you know, send an electrical signal to another plant, which can influence that. So really interesting stuff. So we can see from these readings that Plants and I've only just showed one here, but you can perform this experiment yourself And you'll see that there is a very clear correlation between trying a number of different plants. I've tried uh, aloe vera cucumber Broccoli broad bean uh, and a bunch of others. So you'll find that you get the same results each time that we get a very clear uh, wave this larger amplitude relatively speaking wave in the Delta band the zero to four and um, a reasonably clear signal in the 4 to 8 hertz band, the traditionally the theta band in, with, with the human mind. Um, a little bit of a signal in the 8 to 12 hertz. And like I say, that can be a little larger and more clear in some plants. And of course, we could, you can use this software to up the amplification a little as well um, and be able to see these signals more clearly. I've just kept them this way just for reference so you can kind of see which channels are active while we're initially exploring this. But... Um, yeah, this is an initial experiment. Um, there's obviously a lot of different ways it's going to develop in the future as I explore this more. Um, I only really kind of discovered this a couple days ago, although I've been thinking about it for a while. So you'll probably see more updates on this. Um, in the future, I'm going to try inputting frequencies into the soil um, and using um, a paramagnetic soil that can uh, resonate well uh, with what I'm putting in, but also, yeah, testing what effect these signals have on the plant using this device, um, particularly this low frequency band for a start to, yeah, just see if we can find a resonant peak there, like of uh, something that's affecting the plant, some of the input signals. So 
I'll make another video about that in the future, um, and there'll probably be a lot more on this topic. But as I say, if you have anything, um, if you've tried this before, if you replicated it at home, then you, you get some interesting results. Let me know. Um, it's really interesting stuff. I haven't seen anything like it done before. Um, so I, th I think it might be new, but uh, yeah, let me know if you have seen anything because um, I'd like to find out more about it and try a lot of different things uh, in this area. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the experiment interesting and you try and replicate it yourself at home. Uh, just ask any questions in the comments or if you have any further information or you've tried something similar, please let me know and I'll provide all the links to the stuff I mentioned, the products and also a link to a blog post which will just kind of detail the procedure and a little bit more about making that tool and everything. So make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more uh, of my open source research into all of these different areas. And uh, if you'd like to donate towards the research, uh, you can jump on my website, the link's in the description. And yeah, all of those donations will go towards just furthering my work and putting it all online for you guys to watch. Thanks.